that he never met a true born-again believer that wanted to commit fornication. He says, I think that's what I said. Let's take a listen. Well, I know he's not going to win the war with Tim. Tim is a strong man. He's going to get back up. After the restoration process, he's going to get back up, and he's going to, he's going to do something for the Lord. I've never known a Baptist who was really born of God to commit fornication. And Tim did fall. And Tim did fall. Born of God would be all those who know Christ as Savior. After the restoration process, he... Born of God would be all those who know Christ as Savior. And Tim did fall. I told you that I really believe anyone who is sincerely born of God will not commit fornication. And I will not commit fornication. Anyone who is truly born of God will not commit fornication. Now, his memory is kind of bad, so I played it to him last night, and I then asked him, how's your memory? Listen, listen to me say, how's your memory? All right, take a listen, take a listen. Okay, now how's your memory? Um, I, I don't know, that's close to exactly what I said, you know, I'd even question that. He said he would even question if that's what he really said. You know, folks, uh, I don't know what else to do. I can give you, I can make the, avail the, the DVD available to everybody in the area. I'm willing to give away as many as people call. The man said that he never met a born again or knew a born again true believer who committed fornication. And now he's trying to make it out like he never really said it. He said, I never met one that wanted to. Well, he's met one that wanted to. Tim Whitehart wanted to for two, two years. So either way, listen to him. But the thing is, you know, I just wanted to just reaffirm uh, that, uh, that you and I, you know, really need to have no interaction. I know what you stand for. You know what I stand for. And uh, so that's, you know, that's pretty much as far as it can go and it needs to go. And uh, the book of Romans, I believe it just says that every man must stand before God to give an account of himself. And so that means uh, you're going to answer for you and he's going to answer for him. It would probably be a great idea instead of worrying about him if you worried about you and I worried about me since we're all going to give an account to God for ourselves. Well, we're, we're teachers, Brian, and you're going to give an account for what you've been teaching. And if it is the case that no born-again believer would commit fornication, we need to know. And, and see, uh, Carl, Carl uh, Keith was saying that Tim fell. So we have two contradictions. We have one of you saying that no Baptist, born-again, true believer would commit fornication. He did, so evidently he's not a born-again believer. And Carl Keith said he fell. Now, I know that goes against once saved, always saved. So see, we're actually asking Chip over at Freedom Baptist, who is calling for Tim to apologize to their congregation. We're asking Chip to give us an official statement on, you know, who's right and who's wrong. And, you know, I'm simply the one who's been saying that this wasn't true all along. All right, Johnny, have a good night. All right, thanks. Okay, now, friends, here's how you determine what effect we have. If Craig Edwards goes ahead and goes with Tim, then basically we're going to be there in some form or fashion to document that for you, which means that Brian says he has nothing whatsoever to do with this scenario. Well, does he have anything to do with his dad? Does he not support his dad? Is he against his dad? Does he need to teach his dad that Brian, that uh, Tim is not really a born-again believer? Or does he need to change his position that he doubt, does now know a born-again believer who did, wanted to, any way you want to phrase it, commit fornication? And is it now the case that we need to go back and have a look again at Acts chapter 8 verse 12 and determine is it the case that Simon is a saved person even though Simon did go back and offer money for the power of the Holy Ghost but then he was told later to repent because of what he had done was not right. Does that mean that you were never saved because you do something wrong or is Baptist doctrine wrong? You see, what they're actually saying is Simon was not a true believer. What's the proof that Simon wasn't a true believer? Even though the Bible says that Simon believed and he also was baptized. What for? For the remission of sins? That's the only baptism they knew in the first century. All right. So was it the case that Simon was really saved? They say no because Simon asked to have the power of the Holy Ghost and offered them money. Well, why wasn't he saved? Because he sinned again. Well, Tim Whitehart sinned again and y'all say he's still saved. You see, you cannot have it both ways and we find them in the midst of this dilemma and we are demanding and constantly are not going to let up on this. We're demanding for an answer. So what's going to happen? 
Now, if Craig Edwards doesn't participate, then we'll know that the pressure that we're putting on them to be consistent is working. I believe that Craig Edwards will go ahead. Brian, I know, is talking to his dad. This is what I believe. I believe he's calling up his dad. Now, his dad was supposed to debate me too. His dad said at Freedom Baptist Church that he would handle me. And then upon uh, thinking it over, I suppose, he called me back. I was in Arkansas and he called me back. I have this on tape as well. And he began to tell me how that he didn't want to get involved with that sort of thing. And his son went ahead and did it. And his son is still saying that he thought we weren't going to discuss anymore. I have no desire to stop discussing with Brian Edwards because the more I discuss with Brian Edwards, the more you see the truth that we're saying and the era that they're trying to defend. All right. Now tonight, folks, we have information, I think, that is going to demonstrate without a doubt the kind of world that we're living in. Let me move ahead and start uh, with something else that I have. It is actually demonstrating to you that these individuals around us, many of them, are not able to, um, to sustain their doctrines by the Bible. So what they do is they begin to promote themselves in other ways. And what we're trying to demonstrate is the dishonesty. We're trying to demonstrate, my friends, that you cannot trust a man just because he stands up and claims that he's a follower of Christ. We have a very, if you have driven down 58 in, in the last year uh, in towards Martinsville, you know that there is a tremendous uh, building process that's taking place out on 58 just before you get to the bypass and it is as a result of this individual Michael Penn Galilee Missionary Baptist Church number one they are parading themselves as a missionary Baptist Church when in fact they are Pentecostal they are uh, speaking in tongues and they have women preachers over there they invite Jackie Poe in who is a well-known Church of God preacher and what we want to show you is their ministry on his own website right here is their preparing to make this move, we've determined that we're going to present information that we hope will make a difference in your mind. On his website, he puts forth that he got his bachelor's art degree in theology and his minor in counseling, and he says his doctorate and his master's came from Jacksonville Theological Seminary. Now, Jacksonville Theological Seminary, there is more than one. There's the Jacksonville, Florida Theological Seminary that's located in Jacksonville, Florida, and there's another one that is actually located uh, over in Greensboro. And uh, let me see, I might have just passed it. Uh, let me just keep looking here. All right, here's the one in Greensboro. This is their website. It's in Greensboro, North Carolina. Jacksonville Theological Seminary is registered with the Commissioner for Independent Education of the Florida Department of Education as a religious institution and therefore is exempt from licensure by the Florida state statute. In other words, they don't have to meet any criteria in Florida because they are, re they are registered as a religious institute. Did you know that if you become a religious institute, you do not have to meet any criteria? You don't have to meet any uh, stipulations by the Board of Education or anything from the federal government that says you are what you say you are? Church, uh, separation of church and state, you know. You can just go out and say that you're something and guess what? You don't have to prove it you can get a, a, a board somewhere to accredit you and say that you're a doctor. You know, folks, there's a lot of this going on. There are a lot of these guys who are claiming to be doctor, and he is Dr. Michael Penn. Well, Doc, let's investigate just a little bit on this doctor's degree. Now, before we do that, let's question this. Why are all these preachers needing to be doctors anyway? Isn't the word the authority? Do you need to be Dr. So-and-so so we know that you know what you're talking about? Or can we not just open the book and let the book talk? So Dr. Penn is a Holy Ghost filled individual. Let's see, anointed mission and ministry. Well, he's got the anointing. He's a Holy Ghost filled individual. They speak in tongues over there. But yet he needed a doctor's degree for some reason. Well, let's investigate his doctor's degree. Hope you can see that. That says the Quack Watch. This is a, a website that is conducted, uh, the information that is gathered ha on this particular institute, which is the accrediting association that gave the Jacksonville School their accreditation. Let me just lay this out. You're not what you say you are unless somebody says you are. We have associations in the United States who come along and accredit you. They say that you are a credible institution and you do do what you say you do. Well, remember, Jacksonville Theological Seminary does not meet any state or federal standards. They are exempt. So 
Well, we don't want just any fly-by-night Johnny come lately stepping up and saying you're a doctor, so we'll get another group to accredit us, say that we are credible. Well, who is that? Well, this particular one is the Association of Accrediting International. Well, who are they? Well, they found their place on the Quack Watch, on a pretty high list of the Quack Watch, and this Quack Watch is actually uh, a result of a person who was in the business with the FBI investigating these kinds of institutions. Well, what are we talking about here? We're talking about the Jacksonville Institute, the Jacksonville Theological Seminary, and it's proud to be accredited by the Accrediting Commission International. Thank you. Accrediting Commission International. Well, who is that? Well, according to the Quack Watch, they are actually a very fraudulent and fake institution. Well, you know, I don't always go with everything I get on the Internet. I'd like to do a little bit of research and just see, uh, you know, how their uh, research stands up. JTS is proud to be accredited by the Accrediting Commission International. Uh, ACI is not affiliated with any government accrediting agency and is solely committed to Christian education. Well, well, they're not associated with anybody that checks up on you either. Well, who are they? Well, as we start looking a little bit closer, we start finding out that the Petersburg Times has actually done a little bit of reporting on this uh, accrediting association. And look what they say. The St. Petersburg Times reported, reported, said Alan Contiras, who heads Oregon's Office of Degree Authorization, which closely tracks schools with questionable accreditation, anything accredited by ACI in BB Arkansas is either fake or substandard as far as I know. Well, who is accredited by ACI in BB Arkansas? None other than Jacksonville Theological Seminary. Well, who is Jacksonville Theological Seminary? Well, it's the seminary from which Dr. Penn got his doctorate. I don't believe it's worth the paper that it's written on according to these authorities that we're looking into and we're not through. We don't take, you know, I, I have a little bit of, of uh, uh, my own self, I have a little bit of experience with newspapers. So sometimes newspapers don't always get it right. Sometimes they just go out and get information and they repeat it. But let's at least see what the St. Peter's, Petersburg Times said when they were investigating a college known as St. John's who one of their criminal justice was putting up on his resume and saying that he was a doctor. Well, they began to investigate St. John's and they found out that it was a little town in Louisiana and it was in a house and it was accredited by ACI the Accrediting Association International. Cre accrediting, what was that called? Accrediting Commission International. Now, uh, once they began to do their investigation, they went outside of Florida and they came over into Oregon. And the Oregon's Office of Degree Authorization, which closely tracks schools with questionable accreditation, says, quote, anything accredited by ACI in BB Arkansas is either fake or substandard as far as I know. Well, this was the individual they were investigating. This particular uh, gentleman was going to be the juvenile justice chief, and his degree came from St. John's, a little school over in uh, Louisiana upon investigation. It was just some house over in, in Louisiana who had been accredited by none other than ACI in BB Arkansas and the investigation ended up coming out with anything that comes from that accrediting association is either fake or substandard. Well, let's continue. Pamela Winkler is the person who got this information together. Uh, I'm sorry, the, the reporter is talking to Pamela Winker, Winkler, who is the retired president of St. John's widow, said the school has a private accreditation. Well, where did it come from? It came from the Accrediting Association in BB Arkansas, Accrediting Commission International. It's basically a guy in some church, said Alan Contreras, who's head of Oregon Office of the Degree of Authorization we just read. Now, you mean to tell me that ACI, who is going around accrediting schools like Jacksonville Theological Seminary, is just some church? This accrediting, this commission that says you are what you say you are, is in some church? Well, I decided to do my own check. Well, here is their website, Accrediting Commission International. There's their president, John F. Scheel. Dr. John F. Scheel himself is the head of the Accrediting Commission International. Well, I began to check, and lo and behold, there's John F. Scheel. 
He's the pastor of a Pentecostal church over in BB, Arkansas. Is that him? Can you do an analysis there? This is not handwriting analysis. It's not voice uh, 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 analysis. This is just us looking at the two pictures. It's the same guy. In fact, it's just some guy over in a church somewhere in BB, Arkansas. Folks, I'm from around that area. BB, Arkansas, this is, uh, let's just say, I don't want to degrade any area around here by comparing it to that area, but let's just pick, how about we pick Ridgeway, Virginia. Let's say that you've got this little bitty church over in Ridgeway, Virginia that is accrediting some 300 uh, institutions around the United States and saying that they are what they say they are. Well, you know, that just something about that needs to be investigated. So we investigated and come to find out the guy's some Pentecostal over here who has figured out the angle. He can come in, put out a criteria. In other words, you've got to have so many teachers, you've got to have so many of this, you've got to have so many of that, and you can produce a doctor. Really? One, uh, as a matter of fact, Chip laughed about this today. Chip Coleman said, with all these doctors running around, you'd think that God was sick. Well, you know, there's a little bit of humor to that if it weren't so serious. All these doctors. Why does Michael Penn need to be a doctor? Because Michael Penn is perpetrating an amazing farce on this community. He's claiming that they have the Holy Ghost over there. He's claiming that God is behind his ministry, that he is a doctor. And then on their website, they start this Teamwork Bible College. And, you know, you can actually be educated by Michael Penn through the Teamwork Bible College. But guess what? Guess who accredits the Teamwork Bible College? Now, you go to their website and you'll find that they are an international uh, a group. They have schools in South Africa. They have schools in Australia. They are just, uh, seem like an amazing institution. Not really. They're all accredited by some guy over in a Pentecostal church in BB, Arkansas, who, come to find out, was run out of Missouri. What was he doing in Missouri? He was doing the same thing in Missouri that he's doing in Arkansas, but it's actually illegal when you do it in Missouri. And the attorney general put together a sting in which he played the president of this school that was being set up, sitting there with his big white cowboy hat, and in walked John Scheel, and guess what? They slapped him with an injunction and put him out of the state. He moved over one state into BB, Arkansas, and lo and behold, we have men in Martinsville, Virginia, who have their doctor's degree from the same. Folks, what are we doing here? Are we ever going to get to the point where we pay attention? Now, someone might say, well, you know, what's the big deal about that? Well, let me just let you listen to the big deal. You may be asking, well, you know, is this, uh, is this something that I should be worried about? Well, let me just listen, let you listen to a conversation that I had with none other than Michael Penn. Let's just see. Uh, if I, I may not have it where I think it is. I mean, we've, uh, we've been going kind of without a glitch here tonight for quite a while. It's about time that I had one. See Michael Penn anywhere? Michael Penn. Did I not play Michael Penn last night? Let's just, let me just stay with this and see if I don't have it in the presentation. My How's it going? How going? Good. Johnny Robertson. Good. Back there. I was uh, talking to one of your, a friend, a friend of mine who knows one of your members. Okay. And uh, he was uh, telling me that you were using Acts 5 as a means to convince people today that if they don't give, there's a possibility that God could take their life like he did Ananias. Now, folks, let's just kind of lay this out here. We got a doctor we're talking to here, Doctor of Divinity. And we're discussing not Acts 28. We're discussing Acts 5. Now, you'd think if you're a doctor of divinity, you would have gotten to Acts 5. Maybe if I had said something about Acts 27 or Acts 28, he might not have known about that. But Acts chapter 5, we're in the first part of the book. Continue to listen. Never use that illustration. What, what, how would you use Acts 5? How would you use Ananias and Sapphira in a, in a giving scenario today? Is it possible? I don't know that much about it. You need to hear that. I don't know that much about it. I don't know that much about it. I don't know that much about it. Well, Doc, I don't really know that I'd want to put my uh, spiritual body under your care, my spiritual welfare under your care, if the doctor's degree that you got doesn't put you in a position to know about 
Acts 5. I mean, we're just talking about the fifth chapter. And my friend had told me that he was in fact teaching over there that if you didn't give, let's just go ahead and look at Acts 5. Let me not back that up. So if, if, I were to get, if I were to say on television that, that it had been used that way and say some member of yours called up and defended it, that you had in fact used it, what would you say? If I hadn't used that. Oh, you, oh is that right? So, well, I, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, that's what I, if somebody tells me something, uh, or instance... Now, here's what Ananias and Spira did. They actually weren't honest about their giving. Now, can you see some of these preachers today saying that God actually knows what your giving is and your ability to give is? And if you don't do it... You'll, you'll find this out. you have people in church hear what they want to hear sometimes. And you also will have people that don't understand how you explain the Scripture. Well, you have some people who also... That don't want hear exactly what is said. Did anyone hear Pastor Penn say, God knows whether you are really tithing 10% or not, and if he killed Ananias and Sapphira, well, you go ahead and finish the sentence. Now tonight we're going to have phone lines up in just a few minutes. You can call in and tell us what you've heard over there because we've heard conflicting stories. How you explain the scripture. And so you can't go on here, sir. Well, I, that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm asking you. So that's why I'm saying I'm asking you because someone is saying that in order to to create like, now this is my word now, create more intimidation or more uh, pressure that, that Ananias and Sapphira's death is being used as a, a means to promote, you know, that a person wasn't tithing or that didn't tithe and could expect that to happen. Number one, I don't put no pressure or intimidation to get people to give. That's free will on their heart. We do set standards sometimes, but that's on them. Everything that we put out, you live to give what God wants you to give. Now, we can always set a standard as a church where we will expect you to give. That's not the pastor. But there's no, never be any pressure. If anybody said that, they tell me a lie. Okay. All right. That's, that's if anybody said that Michael Penn put any pressure whatsoever other than it's up to you, that's a lie. Now, folks, I have a hard time believing that. I'm saying this, this gentleman is not a member of the church where I go. He's a person who calls up, people call up because of my television broadcast because I'm saying such and such about ties. So they call me up and they say, look here, I'm in a discussion with so-and-so and I need the scripture. So this gentleman walks his dog every day, he runs into one of your members, the member was telling him this, I'm, I'm checking it out, you're saying it's not so. This wrong to because no, no, this person is defending you to the heel. To the sure, well, I know we don't put no, if no pressure, never have since I've been the pastor, on people to, to, that they have to give or or they go into hell. It's no pressure, never have since I've been the pastor, on people to, to, that they have to give or, or they go into hell. Or... Now folks, can you believe that this gentleman has never told anybody that they have to tithe or they're going to hell? You know what? You can call in and let us know because we have people who go to this church have told us that is absolutely not true, that he has told them that they have to give $1,000 per family in order to build this big million dollar church building that they just got through building. All right, let's move on from Michael Penn and the uh, fiasco having to do with a uh, doctor's degree to the world traveler, Early Dillard. Now last night on our broadcast, I was talking about Early Dillard in the newspaper, Bishop Early and Janice Dillard, they are uh, traveling into seven continents and we're discussing, you know, when will people realize that these individuals are taking advantage of them? A person called in. Now, let me just ask you this too. What does a cross have to do with your cruise on some cruise line where you're headed down into Antarctica, uh, uh, you're headed to Rio de Janeiro? You know, why you got a cross up there? You know, are you somehow or other trying to uh, justify what you've done as if Jesus is involved in this? And so this is in the Martinsville newspaper, explorers of all seven continents. And um, they are basically saying that they're uh, going to all these places. Bishop Early, pastor of Shiloh Way of the Cross, wife Janice, re recently returned from a 20-day trip through South America and Antarctica aboard Holland American Cruise Line. The couple's port of calls. They went to San Diego. They went to Chile. They went to Franklin Islands, Buenos Aires, Argentina. They went to Uruguay, they went to Rio de Janeiro, all of these uh, ports of calls where tourists go. The Dillards met some people on there. The second paragraph also visited uh, these different places and uh, they uh, guided by an ice pilot and science lecture from the U.S. Palmer Station. The Dillards followed the same expedition as Sir Ernest Shackleton, blah, 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 in 1915. They explored the 
path discovered by the two sons of dust explorer um, in January 1616. And then they say the Dillards have visited all seven continents, making them world travelers. The majority of one of the seven content, continents visited uh, have had extensive inland tours to many areas, some on many occasions by trains, buses, ferries, and cars. The Dillards would also like to complete their journey of the 50 states of America, having only five to eight states left in the Midwestern part of the country to visit. Great. The Dillards now say they would like to thank Jesus. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Mere words are not sufficient to express just how we feel. They can't explain the fullness of the praise that you deserve. Why, why does Jesus deserve praise? Because they're running all over the, the states. Well, just hang on. A thousand tongues of thanks. You all, all Thank you all day and through the night still would not declare your fullness, your worthiness, and your might. So here we stand again, our Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer, and say thank you, Jesus. Also, thank you to our Shiloh, the way of the cross church family for the many prayers and assistance while we're on our travel. The experience and treasures learned will help us start a new journey as we can share with others our wealth. Finally, they're going to share their wealth. Well, not really. Wealth of knowledge about our great and unique planet. Do we really need Janice and Early Dillard to tell us what the Travel Channel tells us every day, day in, day out, 24-7, 356 days a year? Do we really need these folks when we are in Martinsville, Virginia with a 20% unemployment actually taking these great trips and uh, riding the backs of their poor brethren? One of their members was over at Martinsville on Sunday asking for help. We are, we are hoping to air this great experience on our local television channel, BTW21, in the near future of our latest expedition. Well, I'm sure BTW is the place you need to go because that's exactly what takes place over there. They promote this fleecing of the flock atmosphere. Well, somebody might say that they were on a soul winning adventure. As a matter of fact, last night, that is what someone said. And it just so happened that Early Dillard called me today in response to the call about the gentleman who was in need from their congregation who came and talked to us because he said he wasn't getting any assistance over there. And whether or not I think they ought to help this gentleman because he's honest or dishonest really isn't the issue tonight. I, I wasn't for helping him because he's not an honest individual and Early Dillard agreed to that too. But while I had him on the phone, we also had a discussion about the person who called up. Does anybody see him on this uh, uh, as I go through this Dillard School? I had to have people, uh, you know, members of the church, other churches, uh, people that know members of no churches. And, uh, you know, so sometimes you have to do that. Well, on another note, uh, did you happen to see our broadcast last night? No, I was out of town. I kind of stayed tied up most of the time. Well, one of the things, um, I, I had not seen this. Uh, somebody gave me a newspaper article of uh, you all in the newspaper. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I was questioning uh, the situation we're in, we're in here in Martinsville, Henry County, with 20% unemployment, what have you. And uh, the calls that I received said that, that uh, the trip that you all made was actually a soul winning trip. And I was just wondering if you want to comment on that. Was it what kind of trip? Excuse me? What kind of trip you say it was? The one that you all had in the, that's in the newspaper, a uh, person said it was a soul winning, a soul winning. Soul winning trip. Uh, well, <laughs> every trip I go on, I try to, uh, uh, so a seed in the gospel of Jesus Christ any, any time I go. But uh, uh, this is a trip that uh, my wife and I, my wife worked, a lot of people don't understand that my wife worked as a medical technologist for 31 years. She retired. She now, folks, I want to get this in front of you. You're on What's the Bible Say? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Uh, can, I, uh, how much, uh, can I have a copy of this program? Tonight. Yes, sir. You can have a copy of this one and the one that took place last night, too. Let me put you on hold. We'll get your address. Okay. All right. All right. Now, folks, here's what I need to tell you. Early Dillard is telling us about his financial affairs. I didn't ask him about his financial affairs. He now is going to tell all the church members about his financial affairs. Listen closely to what transpires. She saved money, it's just the two of us, and uh, you know, uh, along the way my mom and dad died, it's just me and my sister, I inherited some things, and, and we are able to do some things with, uh, and we put back money, and we save money for the travel, that's what we've been doing all our lives, and of course, you know, people tell the wrong things, so uh, 
that's up to them. They have to live with that. God knows that, and they have to live with that. So, uh, well, it doesn't bother me uh, what people say about me. It doesn't bother me a lick. I am who I am. I believe what I believe. If somebody else wants to believe another way, that's up to them. They got to give an account of that. Well, they were these these people were actually taken up for you, Pastor Dillard. Uh, the question that I was pr proposing is is you know when I talked to Robert Kellum, he told me the same thing that you have just said that he ind had independently uh, made a lot of money. And see, my question back is if that's the case, why? Uh, if, if I'm independently able to sustain myself, why am I still receiving salaries and things like that from churches and continuing to amass wealth? I did not say I was independently able to sustain myself. I didn't say that. I thought I had salaries and things like that from churches and continuing to amass wealth. I did not say I was independently able to sustain myself. I didn't say that. I thought I had some money put back to do some things with me. Hearing what's the Bible say? Hello, I just wanted to request a copy of last night and tonight's uh, program on a DVD. All right, I know who you are, and we'll get it out to you. Thank you. All right. All right, now, folks, did you just hear Early Dillard? On the one hand, his wife has worked all these years. He's worked. He was left an inheritance. They're able to travel around because they've got money. They live in a very, very nice neighborhood in a very large house. I believe at one time he had... Early Dillard 8 on his license plate indicating how many nice cars he has and yet he doesn't have enough to sustain himself yet. Well, he doesn't have enough to sustain the lifestyle that he lives as a globetrotter and all the stuff that he does. But you think about him over there with the individuals, none of which live to the level that he lives at Shallow Way of the Cross and he's still amassing wealth from those poor people. Same thing with the Kellums and same thing with other ministers in our area. Continue to listen. And of course what I do, uh, you know, uh uh, I, I think it's up to me, okay? All right. I appreciate you, uh, Pastor. All right? Okay. Uh, I ain't got nothing against you, but I do. You do what you do, and I do what I do. And, uh, you know, so uh, we'll, we'll keep praying for you. Okay, you pray for us. Our opposing is is, you know, when I talked to Robert Kellum, he told me the same thing that you have just said, that he ind had independently uh, made a lot of money. And see, my question back is, if that's the case, why... Uh, if, if I'm independently able to sustain myself, why am I still receiving salaries and things like that from churches and continuing to amass wealth? I did not say I was independently able to sustain myself. I didn't say that. Well, let's, let's listen to what he did say. Let's back it up again. Now, remember, uh, you're on what's the Bible say? Johnny, I think you just scraped from the top. Uh, you are exactly right. We haven't even gotten close to what's really going on. Right. If you keep digging, it's going to be, uh, I don't know, it's getting crazy out here. People uh, just open up any kind of church they want to. And uh, it's actually scary what it is. Well, you know, what we're saying tonight, the reason why this is able to continue on is because people are saying that it is wrong for anybody to investigate anything and to say anything about what anybody does in religion. If you do that, you're judging. Right. Do you believe that's the reason why it continues the way it does? Oh, yeah, you're the only 60 minutes around here. No, Everybody else is either scared or you know, they are uh, in cahoots with each other, scared to say something bad about the other one because the other one's got something bad to say about them. and So they just stand separate. Okay. I appreciate that uh, observation tonight. Thank you for the call. All right, the man said we're the only 60 minutes around here. And folks, our motives are pure. What we're trying to do is the same thing Jesus did. We are trying to stop this being called religion. People are leaving religion in masses. Right now in Virginia, the amount of people that call themselves nothing and are unchurched actually outnumber the individuals who are going and supporting this stuff. And the reason why is because right thinking individuals know that this cannot be right. And Jesus lost his life standing up against it and demonstrating the truth, trying to tell people that this is not religion, this didn't come from God, These, this is man-made. And we're trying to do the same thing tonight. And as we present this information to you, I hope that you're getting a handle on it. What I want to make sure that you hear is listen to him sustain or listen to him justify his behavior 
on the one hand because he's independently wealthy. You're on what's the Bible say? If I did something wrong, you call back. Sorry about that. Now listen, what he's doing is he's telling me how it is that he can justify his globetrotting behavior. I'm independently wealthy. Well, if you're independently wealthy, why are you still amassing wealth through taking it from these people who are not independently wealthy? Listen. Uh, my wife worked, a lot of people don't understand that my wife worked as a medical technologist for 31 years. She retired. She saved money, just the two of us. And, uh, you know, uh, along the way, my mom and dad died. It's just me and my sister. I inherited some things. And, and we are able to do some things with, uh, and we put back money and we save money for the travel. That's what we've been doing all our lives. And, of course, you know, people tell the wrong thing. So, uh, that's... Now, he says, of course, people say a lot of things. He thinks people are questioning him. Actually, friends, people were taking up for Early Dillard. They were taking up for the fact uh, that he was probably on a soul-winning tour. You see, he actually has it wrong. He thinks that people were criticizing him when, in fact, they were not criticizing him. They were taking up for him, thinking that, uh, saying that he was on a soul-winning tour. And, in fact, he's undoing the very thing that they were saying uh, by telling us what he's telling us tonight. So... Uh, let me get back to it just a minute. Sometimes I can't find the things I'm looking for. I was going to look for uh, his picture where he and uh, his wife were uh, on that cruise. And uh, I've got so much stuff open. I want to make sure that I let you hear the rest of that. That's up to them. They have to live with that. God knows that. And they have to live with that. So, uh, well, it doesn't bother me uh, what people say about me. It doesn't bother me a lick. You're on what's I am who I am. I believe what I've to challenge you because they know that they are wrong and you preach from the Bible and you straight from the Bible. A lot of these, lot of these pre preachers, the only thing they want to do is get these people's money, ride around these big cars and have these what this called fashion shows on Sunday. And uh, it, it ain't even about what it's supposed to be. And you're the only one that I know that I've seen or, or heard get right down to it like it's supposed to be. And uh, I like to say one thing. You challenged them all, and ain't none of them stood up to the plate yet. Okay. I don't have no respect for none of them because they are afraid to challenge you, and you stood up straight up and came to them straight up, and they still running from you and, and are scared to uh, challenge you. Keep on doing what you're doing. Thank you for the encouragement, sir. Thank you very much. All right. You're on what's the Bible say? Yeah, Johnny? Yes, sir. Nobody won't call. Sorry. John, it seems nobody will call and confront you, but I will. Uh, I like the views that I have on the Bible. I like to confront you sometime if you want to. No pastor will stand up. Okay, you're, are you a pastor? No, sir, I am not. Well, no, sir? No pastor will stand up against you. Why is that? Um, sir, that's the question of the hour. Why will these pastors not stand up? And yet you are a member of one of these churches, and you are willing to stand up. Yes, sir, I'm willing to defend my faith to the death. Okay. I will do that, and, and I'm sorry for being so blunt. But... No, that's fine, sir. I love you. I wish that everybody would be willing to stand up for their faith to the death. That's what we need. Is that not what Paul did? Yes, sir. He was set for the defense. Not what Peter did? Yes, sir. That's yeah. what all of them did. And yes, sir. I will be able to, well, I don't want to construe something wrongly. Uh, I'd like to talk with you maybe about getting on, and within the next couple of weeks, I will debate you. Okay, let me get put you on hold. We'll get your phone number. I'll get back with you. Okay, sorry to cut you off. We still got him on hold. I got another phone call. You're on What's the Bible Say? Hey, John, how you doing, man? Okay, I'm, I'm good. Okay, what's up, man? Hey, man, I asked you a question about two weeks ago about um, 
And I, I, I hope I ain't changing the subject, man, about what you're doing, because you're all right. But uh, what about, you, you told me, you said, I know people, the viewers hear it, about the um, devil didn't get thrown out of heaven. I didn't say told me. I didn't say that. Okay, did he get thrown out? I said that the Bible says that the devil was an angel, and the angels did get put out of heaven, yes. Oh, okay, so so Jesus took in, um, the, oh, God, he took and um, got rid of the, the most beautiful mm -hmm. angels in the world and threw him on earth. I don't know about that. Now, you know, you may be getting something out of Isaiah 14 mm -hmm. that's not really there. Yeah, I, I, I'm just trying to get it from you because I know you, you talk good. You know, I'm trying to get it from you, you know what I'm saying? But, um... I just was trying to figure that out. I mean, it's been on my mind for two weeks, man. And uh, I'm trying to figure out did the angels look up there and they rebel against God. And God, you know, they he put them out of, out of, get out of my kingdom. Yeah. Uh, I tell you what, Mr. Carter, if, you, if, you'll put, if you'll give me your phone number, I'll get with you. I've been trying to get with you for quite a long time, and we'll sit down and discuss this, and we won't take from our broadcast tonight, which we just have a few more minutes. Yeah, I think you got um, Bishop Early and Janice Diller right there. Yeah. What's happening with that? Uh, you hadn't been watching the broadcast. We've been on for three hours. Yeah, and, I, I just come in. Yeah, sorry. Been but working. I, I've been demonstrating that individuals are out here who are claiming they have their doctor's degree, and their doctor's degree don't come from any reputable uh, accredited association. I've been showing that uh, Early Dillard, I talked to him on the phone. I have the phone call. We're running it right now. Yes, sir. Uh, where he is independently wealthy, but he can, and his wife is retired, and they've got enough money to travel all over the world and yet they still have to take a salary from the poor folks at Shiloh Way of the Cross in a town that has 20 percent uh, unemployment and we're just asking the question is there anything wrong with this picture and uh, you know should we continue to have this take place and am I bad for questioning this just like Jesus did? Okay, man, I, I, ain't, I, ain't, I ain't mad with you. I'm just trying to get, get you. You know, you, you talk good, man. You know what I'm saying? All right. All right. Appreciate your call. Um, <laughs> Now, folks, what we're saying is, uh, let me let, let you listen to another clip. This is from Darcel, uh, Robert Kellum's daughter, and I want to let her explain to you about the Rolls Royce uh, driving around town. You're on what's the Bible say? Johnny, you show, you show preacher tonight on. You got these pictures right and scared to death for you. Well? Because you tell us the truth. You come straight from the Bible, and they know it too. All right, appreciate that observation, and I think what you're saying tonight is going to help us in the sense maybe they'll start straightening up. I hope somebody will hope some of us can straighten up because you're throwing it at them tonight. All right, thank you for the call. All right, folks, um, got another phone call here. You know what does the Bible say? Yes, hello. Hi. Um, you on the TV talking about early dealing and back of pain and stuff, you don't know what you're talking about. Let me tell you something. Our pastor, his name is Early Dillard, okay. and we, our church is not poor. Everybody in our church got money, so the, even the even the us the congregation gives our pastor trips. He don't he don't have to uh, uh, worry about why he's going, cause he go where he wanna go, do what he wanna do, and we also do the same. I don't appreciate you on the on the TV talking about the pastor, the black pastors, of course. Running the pastor down, now, and you I don't, don't know have... what you're talking about, and you need to stop it. Now, folks, don't limit me to the black pastors, please. I call it like I see it, regardless of who it is. Go ahead. All right, she hung up. Now, folks, you know what we did? We just hit on what I was trying to get at. She loves Early Dillard the way he is because he lets them do what they want to do. You see, folks, that's exactly what we've been trying to get to all night, and the lady finally got us there. Why is it that normal thinking individuals don't see through this? It's because they get to do the same thing. Thank you, ma'am, for making our statement for us. Why is it that people in these churches continue to put up with this and promote it because Early Dillard is allowing them to do the very same thing. You see what she said? We love our pastor because he lets us do the same thing that he's doing. You're on what's the Bible say? No, he don't. But you just said he with did. With that mess. You just said he, he did. We do what he, what he, he do. What is you talking about? I heard you we, say. You need to stop your stuff for somebody to do something to you, man. Okay. You need, you, you is pitiful. What
What's going to happen to hey, me? Hey, you jealous? What's going to happen to me? Jealous. Jello got a whole lot of people in our church. We don't have to ask nobody for nothing. And if you do the right thing, the Bible said pay your tithe. And if you do the right thing, God will bless you. Will you give our us, church is blessed. Will you give us the verse? Why we do the things we do. Will you give us the verse where it says give your tithes? I ain't scared of uh, discussing no verses with you. Oh. I, I I don't even like you, but I'm I'm just tired of you. I want you to keep my pastor's name out your mouth. Sorry, sorry, I can't do it. Well, you gonna did you go up with a lawsuit? You gonna do it? Really? Okay, that's the best we can do. Why doesn't your pastor? Why doesn't your pastor answer us? Why he wears a cape? Uh, when he comes into the assembly. I've been there. I've seen what goes on. You're on What's the Bible Say? Good evening, Mr. Robertson. In reference to Paula that just called in, I beg her partner. Some of the members, they, all the members there does not have money. Probably none of them have money. I know this to be a fact. I know I'm very close to some of the members there. And I don't understand why she want to get up there and show herself up. I wonder does uh, 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 Elder Dillard give her any money or whatever his first name is, but I know that to be a known fact. They're just as poor as the dirty is outside on my ground. And speaking of him, I wonder did he give the other half any of his inheritance? Now let her call back in and answer that. Right. I'm sure she knows about it as well. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. And uh, we both know what the lady's referring to when she says, did he give the other half any of his wealth? You're on What's the Bible Say? Now, see, Johnny, you just exposed that so-called Christian at that particular church. Christians don't supposed to talk like that. Christians supposed to have love in their hearts. She's talking about threatening you and, and telling you that you ain't got no business talking about her past. She worshiping her pastor. Right, right. You know what I'm saying That's it's right. not about her pastor. It's supposed to be about Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? She worshiping her pastor. You just breaking them off, man. I swear you'd hurting them tonight. All right. Thank you. Thank you for the call. All right. Now I hope the lady that's listening is listening to other persons in the community who are correcting her that she's not answering in a Christian fashion. I'm simply putting this information up, got the scriptures. She needs to give us scripture. And what's the Bible say? Yes, caller. Okay. Now, we also are questioning Early Dillard's doctorate's degree. Why does he need a doctorate degree if he has power of the Holy Ghost in the first place? You're on what's the Bible say? Uh, you're talking about doctors. Yes, sir. To be a doctor, you have to be. You have to have a PhD. And uh, uh, Michael Penn don't have no PhD. He got that uh, piece of paper. He got it, 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 it ain't worth what the words written on it. All right, do, sir. Do you are you uh, familiar with that? Uh, 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 th uh, well, yes, I'm familiar with it. Okay, I'm listening. You got to have a PhD. Okay. And, uh, and uh, him and. None of them around here got no PhD. Okay. I just, a, a piece of paper got some, some old jack leg. All right. And call himself a doctor. Okay, now, sir, I agree with you 100%, and I'm showing tonight, here's the school that Early Dillard got his PhD from. Now, that right there is Rodney Howard Brown, and he's right beside the president of this so-called school of Bible theology. I talked to him in California yesterday. And this is exactly what you said, a Jake Leg institution. That's right. In the same way by Michael Penn. All right. As no, he, he, cause he, uh, he, as a matter of fact, as far as I know, he haven't even been to no college. All right. And, and to get a PhD, you got you got to first, uh, you got to first have a BS, a, a bachelor of science degree, then go get a master's degree, a degree, and then go get a PhD. Okay. It, it takes a long time to get a PhD. In a PhD, and when you get a PhD, you have you have went to you have went to uh, you have got a, 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 a bachelor's of science degree, a master's degree, and then a PhD. Okay, so you haven't and been. You can be a doctor. You and ain't now one right here got no kind of degree like that. Okay, they're not fooling you. Just fooling people. Okay, thank you, sir. Now, thank even people. All right, thank you for the call. Uh huh. You're welcome. 
Now, folks, tonight we have let the calls come just as they go. I think we've had two individuals. Oh, yes, caller. Yes, um, I just now turned to the station. I'm from Connecticut. I moved down here from um, uh, to Danville area, and I'm also a minister. And um, I heard some of your viewers say that the in this area do not uh, stand up to uh, whatever you believe in or, or whatever the, the problem is, because I haven't. I just, I'm just tuning in. Okay. Um, I heard you tell the other lady about the tidings. Yes. For a minister who do not believe in paying tidings, um, it clearly states in the Bible that we are truly um, by grace and that if we believe that Jesus have died on the cross, that was the day of the Passover, that he was the last Passover. He was the lamb. He was our truly and our last sacrifice. So um, I agree with you, and maybe it's a lot of more pastors in Danville that do agree with you, the reason why they haven't called in or had any confrontation. I don't know the whole total matter because I just tuned in, but you have a very good uh, study here, and uh, I sure appreciate it. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you for that call. All right. That was a great call, and maybe we'll be able to get together with that gentleman and, and study further. You're on what's the Bible say? Uh, yes, Mr. Robertson. I hate to call back. It's all right. The second time, but in reference to uh, I Dr. Penn, I must say, he is a lie, 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 lie. I know several of the members that have gone to his church that, matter of fact, was members there. And I've heard them, not only heard them, but in a fact say to me, all he do every Sunday morning is preach about ties, ties, ties. So I will say again, he's a lie, lie, lie. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Now, folks, I know for a fact that early, that uh, Michael Penn was having three services in which he asked for money every service. Now, let's just do this right quick. I think we have just a few minutes. Uh, when we were talking to Early Dillard, he was telling us why you know he was taking these trips and that he was independently wealthy and whatever. I want to let you listen to why Robert Kellum and uh, Darcel think that they need to go out and drive around. A preacher needs to drive around in this Rolls Royce. And we had some people come in from New York and they wanted, let me just let you let her tell you herself. Good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Deborah. Good morning. Uh, we are asked by Bishop Kellum not to call in on the show and not for people in the community to get upset over this man's words and dishes, whatever he's trying to do. And we have to pray for this situation because uh, it's a lot of lies being told. And you all, you personally, along with Charles, uh, have known my father, Bishop Kellen, for many years. So, and Saturday, actually, when we were driving, the Rolls Royce, when I was driving the car, I had uh, gassed it up for Dad, and we were uh, getting ready to attend Nancy's wedding, and I was asked, not him, that we would, because there were so many people all across the country and that were to be in attendance of this wedding. You uh, got to remember, Nancy graduated, Nancy, yeah. uh, her brother graduated from Yale, and their People not saying everybody that's associated with Nance and Sammy, they are rich, but I'm sure that a lot of the students have wealthy parents, and a lot of those people were in attendance. So to come to Martinsville and see that even though we've been, uh, you know, on the low pole because of our job situation, uh -huh. the passion is closed, and that we still can live, you know, nicely and comfortable, and we are... Uh, you know, it's, it's good folks. Okay. okay. Now, what we want to do is we want to go out and drive our Rolls Royce to let the people from New York who are all rich and come across the, all from all over the country to realize that we're still doing well over here in Martinsville. Well, the preachers are uh, independently wealthy. She told me, Darcel told me that her dad was uh, d retired, uh, had inheritance and had land, independently wealthy. Well, why is he still taking money from these people who have so many difficulties in Martinsville and, and Henry County. Well, we drive in the Rolls Royce to let everybody know we're still doing well in this area. Well, the preachers are. You're on what's the Bible say? Yes, caller. You're on live. 
Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I was going to tell you something. You know, a lot of these preachers, you know, I have been. I'm listening. And uh, independent Baptist preachers especially, is that they preach on wealth and uh, and they preach on uh, uh, about money from, for cars, for tires, for cars, and stuff like that. And, and you know what it gets to me is that, is that if they all let if they all let uh, uh, undone for it, they need to get them a job or do something. All right, all right. Appreciate that. So you're saying you hear all you hear is money. That's right. Okay. Thank you for the call. And folks, that is what's going on. Everybody knows it. Every sermon you hear is about money. You're on what's the Bible say? John, that's wrong with me. We ain't serving God, we serving man. Anytime a person willing to put their pastor above God, they got to be crazy. Now, I love you, Brother Johnny, and I will stand behind you 110% long as I know you're preaching God's word. Thank you. Before it concerning me putting you above God, no. Thank you. My soul means more to me. Thank you very much. They are going to lay you out of what you're saying. Hey, the truth speaks for itself. God said let every man be a liar and let God be true. All right. Appreciate the call. Thank you Thank very you. much for revealing. All right. Thank you for the call. Now, folks, uh, i got just a few seconds left, and I have a, uh, a call that I need to let you hear that um, is on my, uh, it, it came from television, and it came this week, this Monday, and it's in reference to the Tim White Heart Fiesco, and it actually has to do with exactly what we're talking about, about putting uh, the man before the people. Listen to this lady calling in and see how she's still wedded to Tim White Heart. Let's see here, just a minute. Freedom Lady calls. Um, uh, let's see here. Let me think. This one right here may be it. I hope he is. No, that's not it. Let's see. Hold on just a minute. Freedom Lady calls. Freedom Lady. Let's see. Freedom Lady. Oh, I can't find this, uh, this call. Oh, I know what I'm doing. I'm looking in the wrong place. Hold it just a minute. We got uh, one minute left here. And let me, this will be the thing that I have to go off on, I think. If I can find this uh, clip right quick, hold on. Let's see. This is a freedom lady calling in today, uh, a couple of days ago on Charles' show, and notice how she's still wedded to Tim Whiteheart. And, and this leads to another question, because when you, when you follow the Christian world and so forth, do you follow the word or do you follow And I put his life away to the first to believe until that afternoon when I had to learn the truth of the affair. And it stumbled all of us. And Pastor Carl had to read the letter from Pastor Tim. Pastor Tim was gone. He had already got on the plane to go to Florida and left. He was not here to, to take up the scoop or to, to hear from, you know, his people. He left us and left Pastor Carl to do it all. And Pastor Carl done a wonderful job. So, so what would be a question that, that you wanted me to ask him if he does come on? The question everybody's got, I reckon, why? Why, why? Now everybody falls, Charles. Everybody right. makes mistakes. Now, this lady is a Baptist, and she is saying tonight that Baptists fall. And we're going to leave it at that tonight, folks. The Baptists don't know whether a person is truly born again or not. If he commits fornication, he's not truly born again, says Brian Edwards. But now Brian Edwards is in the predicament of knowing his great friend who did commit fornication. Was he truly a Christian? He can't fall, he says, if he is in Christ. But yet this lady just said everybody falls. Carl Keith said that Tim Whitehart fell. You see the dilemma we're in, folks? What you need to do is you need to have a study with somebody who will tell you what the Bible says. This broadcast is free to you. We have five hours of this discussion last night and this night free to you. I'll send out as many DVDs as I can afford, and we can afford a lot of them free of charge. We've got the phone lines ringing. We wish we had the funds to go ahead and go. We, we could go, but we don't have the okay from the station to keep going and keep taking your calls, and it seems that people are very interested in this topic. The only thing I know to do is you get in touch with me at 206-276-806-2150 if you want a DVD of this broadcast or I can help you in any way. Always ask for what does the Bible say. God bless you and good.